Well, let's turn our attention to Delta State now as we continue our coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. Now, the state's Honorable Commissioner for Information, of Information, uh, rather, Charles Anyogo, who himself recently recovered from COVID-19, joins us live. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anyogo, for joining us. Well, let me begin by asking you about your experience, your encounter with COVID-19. Was that a life-changing experience for you? Yes, thank you very much. Actually, let me start by saying, uh, giving glory to God Almighty and appreciating millions of Nigerians who prayed for my recovery while I was on isolation. And like you rightly mentioned in the course of your introduction, I had thought that as somebody who is involved uh, at the level of sensitization in the state, I needed to let individuals who may have become so scared of showing up even when they have symptoms that it's not a death sentence that they should make themselves available for tests. And so I went about uh, the test hoping that I could come out and then begin to use it as form of sensitization to let people know that after I've tried taking the test and I'm negative that anybody could go. But incidentally, I went for the test, but not long after, 24 hours after, I discovered that I have lost my sense of smell. And I said, ah, wow, it means that there's something here. And then eventually, about 24 hours later, when the result came out, it came out positive. And so having been uh, involved in a lot of interaction with some medical personnel since the COVID-19 uh, better in our shores, uh, at least I had a little information. And so I had to interact with them once again as to what I was supposed to do. And uh, they, need, they, they had to do the right thing first to ask that one isolate and they discover that I should be able to have a place where I can isolate without having to mix up with a number of persons. And then they brought the necessary drugs and in particular the vitamin, multivitamins that I needed to take with a view to further boosting my immune system while they continue to check on me on um, almost on daily basis. And so the doctors were quite wonderful, most especially one doctor, a piece, he was aware, the CMD of um, Asaba Specialist Hospital. She was there true and true from beginning to the end. And I give God the glory that today I can say that I have survived the virus. But I did say, I did say that coronavirus is not malaria. There are two different things entirely. And so for anybody who wants to tell that it's the same thing as malaria or high fever, that is not true. And we cannot overestimate that point. Once again, we're very glad that you're well now, uh, Ms. Daniagu, and doing better. So let's speak, let's speak further about the importance of the early reporting of symptoms, because I know that was also a very big thing for you. How important would you say it is for people to report their symptoms early in order for us to save lives and also in order for us not to put too much pressure on our medical resources? Well, there are many keys to survival, but I think early reporting is quite vital. What it does is that, number one, you receive the, uh, the trauma of having the virus uh, take advantage of your vital organs, particularly the respiratory system. The moment you are able to report early, especially for those who even have comorbidity or pre-existing uh, health conditions, it means that the medical personnel are able to deal with it and then at the same time ensure that they also manage whatever pre-existing condition the person may have been may be going through for me i'm lucky by the grace of god i don't seem to have any of such a pre-existing conditions let me also tell you that more than eight almost uh, more than 80 percent of those who come down with the coronavirus at the initial time are quite mild and if at that mild state you are able to report the medical personnel are able to know are in a position to know what drugs to administer how to monitor your systems to ensure that you are not uh, placed in such a situation that you are not able to breathe. Because if the virus attacks your respiratory system and to the extent that you are not able to breathe, it becomes a bigger problem. And that's why you see some persons having to require the ventilator. But if you are able to breathe by yourself and you don't require external assistance for the purpose of uh, having oxygen in your system, at least you are almost 50% sure that you are likely to survive. But another challenge is that a number of the drugs that is, are usually administered are quite heavy. And so for those who have comorbidity or pre-existing health conditions, it is possible that the drug that you need to take for the purpose of uh, surviving the virus may not also be at home with whatever pre-existing condition that you have. And that is why early reporting, like you rightly asked, will to a very large extent assist the medical personnel to begin to arrest the whatever challenge that the coronavirus may throw up on time 
Because if they do that, the virus will not have the opportunity of uh, mutating in your system and causing more dangers. So we plead with anybody who, for instance, the moment you have any symptom that is related to the one that are already outlined, the best thing to do is to uh, report to medical personnel. There is no big deal. There is no need living in denial. Because there are those, even when they are feeling a such symptom, they say, no, I'm used to it. It's malaria. I don't want to go for tests. Why not go for tests? If it turns out that you're negative, good and fine. But if it turns out that you're positive, it makes it easier for your health situation to be managed. But for people to continue to live in denial and say they don't just want to go, as if it is going for the test that will confirm that you are positive. If you are not positive, when you go for the test, it will come out and show that you are negative. If you are positive, not going for the test will not convert it. And then sitting at home and having to administer your drugs because there are a lot of uh, medical doctors now, uh, emergency medical doctors on Facebook and in social media, and you begin to listen to them that just take this. They name all sorts of things. One thing is sure, you may not even be aware whether the drug they are recommending for you will sit well with your system. Because different individuals, apart from having a different immune system, yeah. also have different body types. Okay. So you need medical personnel to come in for okay. the purpose of proper medical advice. Yeah, Mr. Commissioner, you've spoken at length about um, early warning signs. But in your case... You were asymptomatic. You went in to take the test to use it as a campaign drive for people to, yeah. uh, you know, to demystify the myth that COVID-19 is a death sentence or, or, or whatnot. Yeah. So in your case, as asymptomatic, would you be pushing for the Delta State government to change case management protocol and testing protocol to uh, include even asymptomatic people in the state? At the moment, right from the time I got tested, I can tell you that we have changed our protocol to a very okay. large extent. Though you may not have uh, all the um, uh, reagents to test everybody at the same time, but what we did is that everybody that had contact with me and some other person, we got them tested. And so a number of the staff that were working with me, very di directly with me, were actually asymptomatic. But it turned out that a good number of them tested positive. And this, at the same time, they were managed. And today, a good number of these persons have also turned out negative. Beyond that, even in the office of my senior colleague in government, the SSG, he, uh, some of the persons in his office were also as asymptomatic. But because of him, more than 50 uh, persons in his office were also subjected to tests. And quite a number also came out uh, positive. What that tells you is that there are a number of persons who are carrying this virus, either because of the state of their immunity or whatever medical explanation that may exist, are uh, quite asymptomatic. But what is important is that individuals, the, for the, particularly for those who even have the symptoms, the idea of a number of persons living in denial, do you know that there were even those who showed up and they failed to present their right name or their right phone number? And the question is, if you are coming forward for the purpose of testing, why do you have to present false information? You should be able to make yourself available in such a way that at the end of the day, you are able to, you are able to determine that indeed, that this is the person who is coming out for tests, and so that the, the, the medical personnel are well-guided. And so, as much as possible, everybody that shows any symptom, at least you also make himself available for tests. Certainly. And still on this, just before we round up this interview, how would you say that your office in particular is using um, strategic communication to really drive this message and to really get rid of the prejudice that you once described as well as the greatest problem that we are facing in the fight against COVID-19 in Nigeria today? Well, since I came down with the virus and a number of other persons, particularly high-profile persons in the state, and um, quite a number of those who are also working with us, who have realized that we need to step up our uh, sensitization drive. We have also been able to understand that there are a lot of uh, prejudices that exist. There are individuals, uh, particularly some bigots at the religious level, who will tell you that you, there's nothing like coronavirus that you just need to pray. Yes, prayer is quite important, but much as that is the case, we also need to know that faith without work is dead. And so anybody telling you that all you need to do is to pray, you need to pray to survive. But to pray that there's no coronavirus and you refuse to take the necessary protocols is not the right thing. So we are communicating, also taking advantage of um, the State Orientation Bureau. In addition to so many other platforms, there are some political groups that we're also taking advantage of with a view to getting them to talk to the people at the local level 
we're also taking advantage of uh, several um, um, uh, mass communication means of uh, reaching out to our people. But beyond that, we have been able to understand that one-on-one -on -one will play a lot of role in terms of uh, community discussions. At the community level, traditional rulers and the traditional institution is also being used, even as we continue to drive it down for individuals to understand that those prejudices, where they begin to think that the virus is not real, it's not true. Coronavirus is real. And once you're able to observe the necessary protocols, i.e. constant wearing of face masks, particularly when you're in the public, regular washing of your hands, and ensure as much as possible to maintain a reasonable uh, fiscal or social distance whenever, whenever you're in the public, to a very large extent, they do help because you are able to stay away from the droplets that may come from an infected person. Once you're able to do that, you've been able to meet uh, the medical personnel halfway. But once you assume that it's not important and you continue to congregate, against these protocols, you are likely going to, uh, the, the, uh, the, the chances of, of uh, contracting the virus become higher when you uh, fail to observe all these other protocols. But in the event that you observe them, like I was always doing, but somehow it comes down that you contract it, the best thing is to report early and then follow the necessary protocols so that by the grace of God, we're able to reduce incidences of fatalities. Mm -hmm. If you understand, at the moment, the medical personnel tend to have been able to understand more how to manage coronavirus, or like when it came, uh, came to our shores sometime in February. Thank so you very much, Mr. Mr. Charles Daniel Go, Commissioner for Commissioner of Information, Delta State, South, uh, South Nigeria.